Hi there and welcome to another Xperia Ireland training video. In this video we're just going to go through the Iris Plus app that is available for iPod, iPad, iPhone and most Android devices. We're just going to basically go through the features uh, very quickly on the app and um, showing you the layout and so on. So we have it here on a normal um, iPad 2. Um, go around the layout first of all, along the uh, left hand side we have our different modes, so we have multiple buttons, single and so on. We'll go through those uh, individually. On the right hand side of the screen, um, we have a subset of modes. So in this case, it's for multiple buttons. You can see we can choose the number of buttons and so on. Again, we'll go through that um, one by one. If you're using a, an iPhone, it will only show this part of the screen and then when you click on that it'll go into the subset it's just not enough, not enough room on the screen itself so the first thing to show you is multiple buttons um, you can see as preset it's eight buttons it's in locked mode we have click sound and we have vibrate just bear in mind um, iPads the older ones don't have vibration motors in them so you're not likely to get a call and so on so that has no function on this particular iPad for example so if we click start, you can see we have our eight buttons. Don't worry about this dialogue at the top. I just don't have this uh, unit connected to an eye converter. But if you ever got that message, it means your Wi-Fi isn't connected correctly. So in this mode, we're in locked mode. It simply means, for example, if we had a bubble tube, we pressed red. The bubble tube would turn red and stay red uh, forever, essentially, until you told it another color to change to. They're nice, bold, bright, distinct buttons, um, very visually appealing. If I click done, you can see it says double tap to exit, and that's just so you don't brush that by accident. So you double tap and we just come back out to our, our main menu again. You can see the first thing we can change here is the number of buttons. So we can say, for example, change that to four. You can see we have four larger buttons and that's a significant thing if you has a, uh, have users with um, poor fine motor control it makes it a little easier for them uh, or if you're wanting to work with less colors these colors will always be preset you can't change which ones uh, you want to work with and if we go down to two you just hit start again you can see you've got two very large buttons now that are much easier to, to press than those smaller ones the next mode, so I'm just going to put that back onto it. The next mode is our switch type. And I'm just going to go through these one by one. So locked, we have discussed, that means you press the color and the color stays that color forever until the user presses the next button. Toggle mode, see we're now in toggle mode. Toggle mode, if you press red, the bubble tube will turn red. If you press yellow, it won't do anything. What toggle uh, mode means is you must turn off the color that you currently are before you can turn on a new one. So for example, if the bubble tube's lit up red, you would need to press red first. The bubble tube lights will turn off and then you can press yellow and the bubble tube uh, will turn on yellow. Then to turn that off, you must press yellow again before you can go on to your next color. Um, and it's just an uh, extra cognitive layer. It can also help with colored recognition. So. You can be asking the user, well, what color is the bubble tube now? It's yellow, so I must press yellow. Momentary is uh, a good one for several different reasons. So momentary works on the basis that you must press and hold the switch or the button. So you must, if you want the bubble tube to turn white, you must press and hold white. Press and hold white. For as long as you're pressing and holding, it will stay white. As soon as you let go, the bubble tube turns off. This can be useful for a range of reasons, one of which is it creates a stronger cause and effect than just changing color because um, you have the very clear transition of no bubble tube lights or bubbles to the lights coming on to them off, uh, off again whenever you let go. So it's a strong cause and effect. Um, the other reason you could maybe use this is if you had a user maybe with a, a shorter attention span. So maybe they would just press yellow and then they wander off and the bubble tube is no longer as interesting to them. But if they have to press and hold, 
then um, it may hold their attention for a little longer. Just count it out again. The next mode is racing. This is a little hard to explain, but if you think of this almost like a game show buzzer. So, I press yellow, the bubble tube will turn on yellow and it'll stay yellow for five seconds. Within that five seconds, if I press any of these other buttons, nothing happens. After the five seconds, the bubble tube turns off again and it's ready for you to press another button. So if you think of this like a game show buzzer, say you had two users, uh, you say one is, and you could do this by putting it into uh, two switch mode again. You have two users and you're asking them questions, for example. One is team red, one is team yellow. Team yellow knows the answer, they tap yellow first. They lock red out for five seconds. The bubble tube or whatever lights up yellow and they can answer the question. Just one of many different ways you could, you could use that mode. The next mode is timed, and this is pretty straightforward. Timed mode, you can see we've got a couple of different uh, options here. So you can set the time anything between one and 60 seconds. Um, after five seconds, it goes up in five second increments. So if I said, 10 seconds, click start. If I press red, bubble tube will turn on red for 10 seconds. After the 10 seconds, it'll turn off again. Um, if the user doesn't want to wait that long, pressing yellow will override the command. So it will go straight to yellow and it'll stay yellow for 10 seconds and so on. So a useful little mode there. Scrolling stop, this is an interesting one to explain. So we've got a few different more options here. We have time and scroll time. So time is whenever you press the button, that's how long it will stay on the color for. The scroll time is how quickly it changes between the colors. So if you, for example, we put this on two seconds and we put the time just on 10 as before and I hit start, what the bubble tube will start doing is cycling through its colors in a set sequence, red, yellow, green, blue, and so on. At any point in time, if you press any button, it stops on the color that you that the bubble tube is on. So if it's going red, green, blue, and then you hit any button, it stops on blue and stays there for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, it starts cycling its colors again. And then the last mode is scrolling next. And scrolling next is very good for users that maybe don't have the the fine motor controller dexterity to manage pressing individual buttons. What this will allow you to do is press any button. So I've only got two buttons up here, but it would be the same if I had eight. If we had eight buttons, it doesn't matter what color it is. So I would be going red, yellow, green, blue, and it goes through um, the colors in a set sequence uh, until you get back to red and it's always the same sequence. So. It's really embodying um, Xperia's motto, which is multi-sensory for everyone. It's giving everyone that uses the equipment the best chance of being able to use it in their way. Okay, now we're into single button mode. So what this mode is mainly designed for um, is again, those users that may not have uh, fine motor um, control um, or if you want to make it um, less cognitively taxing. This is a single off white or gray button. And in its standard mode, it's in scrolling next mode. So that again is red, yellow, green, blue, orange, magenta, purple, white, red, yellow, red. It's always the same sequence. So it allows someone who doesn't have that fine motor control to be able to control the equipment. Okay, very simple to start off with. Again, we've got mode we can change this to. So for example, it's preset to scroll in next. For toggle, what would happen is I would go red on, red off, yellow on, yellow off, green on, green off, and so on. So it's on, off, on, off, on, off. Again, it's slightly better for um, cause and effect because they have that stark contrast between the device being on and the device being off. The next mode is again that momentary mode. So what this will do is red on, I have to keep my finger on it. As soon as I let go, red is off, yellow, 
off, green, off, and we're always following that same sequence. And then the final mode in this is our scrolling stop. So again, sorry, I'll just go back to the sentence again. You've got the time, which is how long it's going to stay that color for. And the scroll time is how fast it goes through the color. So if I were to hit start and we're paired to a bubble tube, it would start going red, yellow, green, and it would be changing every two seconds because that's what we've set. And then as soon as I press the button, it stops on the color it was on. So if it was on yellow, it'll stop on yellow and it'll stay there for the amount of time that you've determined. And that's our single button mode. The next button uh, here is cube. So you can see again, we've got locked and timed. So there's always a mode setting in most of these. Um, timed is pretty obvious again. So if you activate it, then it'll stay for five seconds and then turned off. Locked means it'll just stay on that color. And what this mode does, it's a little bit of a strange one, but um, this mimics our cube. The cube is the, the dice-like uh, product that we have that if we turn it on to red, it changes the bubble tube red and so on. Um, the way this works, which I'll just demonstrate with my phone. So if you had, and it works better with a phone to be honest with this, we have a, an iPhone 5SE, I think it is. If you held the phone like this, it would be red, yellow, green, blue, white. So it uses the accelerometers in the device. Um, this can be good if you have someone that is a fidgeter. So let's say they were doing this with the phone or the iPad. As they were doing that, they would be changing the colors on the device. So it's a more unusual mode, but it, it definitely has its, um, its uses. Okay, and now we're gonna move on to compass mode. So compass mode is another quite specific mode, but it can be very, very useful for certain users. Um, again, we've got mode, so we've got locked in time, just again in this one, we've got click and vibrate. What this mode does is it uses the compass sensor within the device, so the iPhone or whatever, and it allows it to know the orientation. So you can see we've got a, a circle that is in eight segments with our eight colors. And as you turn the iPad, it changes to different colors. And you can see it highlights the color. So and it's in line with this little arrow at the top. So there's loads of different ways you can use this, but the way um, that's possibly most useful is um, again, going back to our ethos of multi-sensory for everyone. We want um, as many people as possible to be able to use the equipment. So in this mode, we determined this would be a good way for quadriplegic users to be able to access the use of the room. So if you imagine a quadriplegic user being someone that doesn't have uh, use of their hands or legs or at least very, very little use, um, nine times out of 10, um, a person with that condition will have a powered wheelchair and that powered wheelchair, they will um, control by very specialist means, usually by head tilt control or by a little sit puff machine where they have a straw that they can control the orientation of their wheelchair. Now, the reason that's significant is if they can control their wheelchair, they can control the orientation of the iPad. And the way you would work that is you'd simply set the iPad or the iPhone on their tray or on their lap. They turn the chair and then they too can control the equipment. So very useful little mode. Um, so that's, that's the main way that we think um, it should be used, but you can use it any way you want. You know, someone spinning around and making a random color or, or whatever. It's just a useful little um, mode. Okay, so the next mode is sound mode. And again, just before we go into it, we've got four different modes within that. We have locked, so as before, if you don't do anything, it stays on the color that it's on. Momentary. Um, it only lights up whenever the thing you're supposed to do is happening. So making a sound in this. And then we've got scrolling stop. And then we've got a new one called sound responsive that we haven't encountered before. And sound responsive just means that every little nuance of sound, different pitch change and so on, a beat, for, for example, maybe on music, 
will change the color and it's again we're back to this sequence of red yellow green blue it's always the same so if i were for example to go into locked mode and then hit start you can see for start we've got a sensitivity dial so you can tailor how loud or how quiet you want the person to be you can see that we've got this um volume tab or volume bar and this is picking up my voice and the most significant thing to note here is this little um pair of arrows that is the activation line so if i'm talking quietly and i'm not breaking the activation line nothing's happening as soon as i talk loudly enough and it breaks this then that sends a signal so if the bubble tube was on red and then i said hello it changed to yellow and then every time there's a sync sound loud enough to break this line it changes to the next color so hopefully that makes sense where again this is very very good for cause and effect is momentary mode so if you imagine momentary mode you're sitting in the room quiet and as soon as you talk then the lights light up on whatever it's paired to and you get a very strong correlation of cause and effect when i talk the lights turn on when i'm quiet the lights will turn off so a very nice little mode uh, there so the next mode we have is vibration vibration works very much like the sound mode so you have very similar uh, mode settings we have locked momentary scrolling stop and vibration responsive this time instead of sound responsive but works in much the same way where every little vibration sends a command so you get a very active light show basically um but the way this basically works again we've got a sensitivity dial the only difference is it's in the menu rather than in the the device um main screen if we click start you can see it says shake device it doesn't have to be a shake it can be a tap it can be moving the device around and again there's a multitude of ways that you can use this or that's advantageous so if you have someone that's very hard on the screen and you're maybe scared of the iPad getting um, damaged, um, what you can do is put it in vibration mode and flip it over so the person's hitting the back of the iPad. And what we would normally, I've got a, a bare iPad here, but in a sensory room, nine times out of 10, you would have it in a protective case. So they would just be banging on the protective case. Um, the other way that you could use this, again, is using a smaller device like an iPhone or an iPad, or sorry, an iPod. So if you had, say, a user maybe with several palsy that doesn't have any fine motor movement and they have difficulties with um, with fine control and pointing and so on, if they can grip, for example, the iPhone and they've got gross motor movement where they can shake the phone like this, then they could be changing the colors this is especially good again in momentary mode so if they're sitting still there's no lights as soon as they shake the lights will light up and change through colors the other way again if you've got it if someone had contracture and they couldn't grip it at all and we know ot's love their velcro and so on so you could literally velcro it to their wrist and they just have to shake their arm so again it's, it's getting back to that multi-sensory for everyone the next mode along these two uh, modes are for very specific products uh, in our uh, lineup, but I'll just show you quickly what they do. The two products that these will be compatible with are our musical touch wall, our Iris musical touch wall, I should say, and also our Iris LED scanner. And uh, the LED scanner uh, points a spotlight uh, anywhere in the room, and the the Iris um, musical touch wall is a touch wall device, but again. We're wanting to make this as accessible for everyone as possible so you can pair uh, the ipad to it and uh, if i went into this mode dragging my finger dragging the cursor around would change the position of um the scanner so i'd be dragging a spotlight around the room tapping this button changes the color of the scanner uh, for the musical touch wall it's like drawing on the screen with your finger without having to touch the screen. So if you have someone with accessibility issues, maybe. And um, again, tapping the icon changes the color. The next mode, Scanner Tilt, does almost exactly the same thing. 
except you can see touch doesn't do anything. If I lift the iPad up and start moving it around, it's using the accelerometers. I just kind of have to flip that up. And if I change that into different arm mounted modes, you can see we can get this in camera. moving the cursor around so again there's a, a load of different ways you can do that so um a load of different ways you can use that so it could be um teaching someone balance so they could be standing there and you could be saying keep the keep it as still as possible whilst you're walking or a whole multitude of um different ways to use that but as i say those two modes will only work with an iris led uh, scanner or an iris musical touch wall Okay. Next mode is RGB slider mode. So vast majority of our products um, have what are called RGB LED. So that is red, green, blue. And you can use red, green, and blue to make up to um, roughly about 16,000 different color combinations by dimming and brightening the different three different LEDs. And what this mode does is it allows you to have full control over these and um, this mode is that for anyone but we find it works very well with um, ASD users and what it also gives you is dimming control so in all the other modes that we've looked at so far the LEDs are either on or off full brightness or no brightness if I had this like that that would be very dim white you can see it's multi-touch so you can move them if your decks got good enough dexterity you can move all three uh, at once so that would be full brightness white that would be full brightness green and um, that would be purple that would be more pinky color so you get the idea so you've got 100 by 100 by 100 so that's 10,000 uh, color combinations Second to last mode is RGB color wheel. And if anybody's used an art or drawing program on a computer, this will be a familiar uh, gamut wheel, basically. And again, um, quite popular with ASD users. Um, this gives you very fine control. And as you move this around, the bubble tube or the device, whatever it may be, um, will slowly, slowly transist around those different colors, whites in the middle, so that's our pinks, our blues, our cyans, our greens through the yellows, through the reds, through the magenta. So a nice little mode there. You can see we've just, we've just got timed and, and so on the color wheel. So that will give you a better cause and effect. So if I move that to green, and then let go it will stay green for five seconds and then turn off and then i can move it goes to orange and so on our second to last mode is voice recognition if i click start on this you can see we've got locked and timed again we're just going to stay unlocked we hit start and it has our eight colors displayed orange red magenta white green cyan yellow blue you can see what way it works basically you say the color it will recognize that it's recognized your voice and it'll send the command to the device to change to blue now i will admit you have to be quite eloquent in, the, in your speaking for this to activate so if i say red 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 white red orange magenta so it's picking me up quite well um but if you have someone that, that can't um enunciate very well it's not going to work that well 
one thing that we've noticed um, is this mode seems less sensitive to pronunciation in the Android phones. So if you have maybe, um, or sorry, Android devices, phones and tablets, if you have someone that is having trouble with this, you can try them um, on the Android. Now what you may get is more false positives. So for example, in the Android device, I said bite, it might think I've said white um, and so on, but um, still a useful little mode, um, only available in, in English, unfortunately. And then the very last mode, if I can get out there, is calming. I go to calming mode. What this basically does is you've got settings one to five seconds. That's our scroll time. I set it to five, hit start. Whatever this is paired to, so if it was paired to a bubble tube, fiber optics, and an infinity tunnel, for example, we're now in calming mode in those devices. And all this is doing is it's sending out a signal every five seconds to change color, to change color. And it's a good way to quickly set a room up um, to, to be in calming mode without having to go and unpair the devices. Uh, one thing just to bear in mind with this mode is try not to forget about it. So maybe people will have the room going and then they're finished with the iPad and they'll fire this in a cupboard. It'll still send out that change color command. So the next person comes in and doesn't know someone's been using the iPad and they come in and go, why is everything changing colors by itself? I'm so confused. It's because this is sitting still sending the command. So if you're not using cam in mode, just double tap done. As soon as you're in the menu, you're not sending anything else. The very last thing to, to show you in here uh, is the th three things at the bottom. So setting up Iris is just showing you how to connect to your eye converter and, and so on. Don't need to go into that in too much detail, but you can see um, it just gives you a little troubleshooting guide and so on. About Xperia Iris, it's just an explanation of um, what it does. The last thing to show you is general settings, and this is controller group. If you had two iPads in an Xperia Sentry room, the devices don't know the difference between those iPads. So if you had two iPads, both on controller group one, those two users would be controlling the same devices and you would effectively get in crosstalk. Now, there is advantages to this if you want social interaction or something like that. Um, with two users, you can use that to your advantage. But if you wanted to have two iPads in the room acting as two different talkers, you can change one of the iPads to a different controller group. And then that means you can have, for example, the controller group one and they're using the infinity tunnel for example it makes these two totally different um talking devices so it means you can effectively have up to four ipads per room connected to the same eye converter at once okay thank you for listening uh, to our run through on the xperia rs app we hope you find it um useful and we hope your users enjoy using it okay thanks now goodbye